Bitcoin having is a lie. I wonder the context of this video. I want to see what's being spoken about. And hopefully we learn some. Hopefully we learn some information that we don't know. Because listen, it's the time right now. I believe it's the time. We need as much information from as many sources and as many people as possible to make some great decisions investing in this bull run. So I need all the information. I want to hear bears, bulls, everything in between, the snakes that's just out here lying, trying to steal people money. I want to hear from everybody. Like, <laughs> we need everything. So yeah, let's jump into it, y'all. Drop that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's get it. The legendary Bitcoin having is upon us. It's rapidly approaching. But yes, the problem is you are being lied to about the having and what its potential impact is on the price of Bitcoin. There's a lot of okay. theories out there all over the internet but some of it is being spread like wildfire and it's poison to your ears because what they're saying is a complete lie. In today's video, I'm gonna present the clean, cold, hard facts in the charts. And you are going to leave this video with a sense of clarity and a sense of peace as to exactly how this has happened in Bitcoin's entire history. Thank We're you, gonna sir. Look at this upcoming halving, when it's going to happen, but we're also gonna compare the 2012, 2016, and 2020 halving because they all had the exact same patterns. If we look at mm. these patterns, we know exactly the patterns that are about to play out before they happen. Welcome, I'm Steve. Here we deliver honest, sponsorship-free TA with genuine value. Subscribe for a no BS approach that actually helps you subscribe here we are we're on the bitcoin monthly chart and there is a lot going on that is very very exciting let's start with these white lines do you see this white line right here in 2012 that was our yes, sir. next one was 2016 this white line right here that's exactly when the having happened in 2020 this white line right here is exactly when the having happened and here 2024 this white line is precisely when this having is going to happen. Now, all four of these havings have so much in common. Right before the having happened, it was the same patterns that led into the having and the same patterns after. Take a look at this. So this having happened to be in phase two of the bull. 2016, the having happened to be in phase two of the bull. 2020 happened to be in phase two of the bull in 2024. We're in phase two of the bull right now. But what happened right before then and what happened right after then is where all of the secrets lie. Take a so, and this is the information that we need because if we can follow the history of what actually happened and we know what, what moves that we can make, what moves make sense for us to make as investors to try to capitalize on this opportunity because we know there's gonna be once in a lifetime, but I, I wanna know just how big this is, you know? Take a look. Bitcoin had its market cycle top back here in June, 2011. Then we entered a bull flag. A bull flag is technically, we have resistance at the top of our channel and we have support at the bottom of our channel. We have multiple touch points on the top multiple touch points on the bottom, and that is a bull flag. It's an incredibly bullish thing. We happen to have a bull flag here, and here, and here, and most recently here. But what happened right after the bull flag is we had a golden cross. A golden cross is when you go to the daily chart and you put on the 50 moving average and the 200 moving average, and you look for the 50 to cross back above the 200. It's a very bullish signal. It's a big momentum shift. And every single time we were in the bull flag, we broke out of the bull flag with a golden cross. We did so in 2012, and we had this bull flag back here in 2014, broke out with a golden cross. We had this bull flag back in 2018 that broke out with a golden cross. And most recently, we had our bull flag break out with, you guessed it, a golden cross. So the exact same formula, the exact same techniques, the exact same patterns are repeating itself time and time again. But what okay. happened after the golden cross? We entered phase one of the market and then phase two of the market. Phase two is when we had this halving. Tilt your phone to the side and subscribe. So 
We had both flags. All right, bro. Golden Cross. <laughs> nah, you, what was that, bro? <laughs> nah, hey, that was an attention getter, though. I, I respect it. Like, that was crazy, though. <laughs> like, that just caught me so off guard, bro. My man's trolling me doing a serious topic. Phase two of the market. Phase two is when we had this having. Tilt your phone to the side and subscribe. So we had bull flag, golden cross, phase one, phase two. Bull flag, golden cross, phase one, phase two. Bull flag, golden cross, phase one, phase two. Most recently, bull flag, golden cross, phase one, and we are in phase two. One of the things mm. that's popping up okay. all over social media is that the having spurs this huge rally in Bitcoin because of the supply shock, et cetera, et cetera. That's completely untrue. If it were true, we had this having in 2016 and we were at this price. How come the price fell afterwards? And how come it took many months to recover? How come we moved sideways for like five months? If the having spurs this big rally, it would have happened right at the having. So we have to look at the facts. These same patterns repeat, but these cool, fancy headlines in the news will put these out and people will drink the Kool-Aid and they will act just like the herd. I don't. I mean, it is convincing, but maybe this is the, the this, this is the bigger point, like researching more, educating yourself more, because I'm not fully educated on everything crypto, obviously. But what I'm curious to see is what were the news and headlines at that time? Because right now, it's compelling for something different to happen with Bitcoin. Like, I want to believe the million dollar, uh, million dollar Bitcoin coming. I, I want to believe all of that. But it's like, because it's based on, we got ETFs now. We, like, it's, it's getting mass adopted. Like, I mean, Bitcoin is really starting to get that institutional push. It's like, it's, it's a lot happening right now so that's never happened before in history so you want to believe that oh maybe the results is going to be different but if we go by the charts which i don't know i, I don't i'm not a technical analysis expert either so that's why i'm not sure if there's been some huge there's been a pattern that's lasted this long that's just ever had this huge thing that's just like besides a black swan event or something like that but has there ever been a time where something just insanely different happened than the charts has been saying for years, you know, like, so it's a lot, it's a lot of angles to come at this from. And I'm not fully educated on any of those angles, like the headlines were the headlines back then towards the having as bullish as they're looking right now for that time period. And also has there ever been a time where the charts was going consistently and then something just happened that completely made it go blow blow up more or make it even fall more like because that's always an option anything is possible but yeah I, I doubt seriously doubt that big i think bitcoin's going up obviously but yeah anyway i don't want you to do that what i want you to do instead is base things on actual facts another thing floating around social media is like hey steve this time is different we've got the etf we're gonna have a new all-time <laughs> high before the halving Really? Let's look at the facts and the charts. Did we have a new all-time high before this having? Hell no. We weren't even close. How about in 20 Okay. <clears throat> so, so we didn't have a new all-time high before the having. So if we don't have a new all-time high before this having, we'll know he's right, right? 2016, did we have a new all-time high before this having? Hell no. We weren't even close. Actually, when you take a microscope and you look a little bit closer, we're pretty much the same type of price range with every having. If you look at this all time high and you go down to where price was around the having, we were right around here, right? We're right around about 50% 50, 50 below that price, meaning we had this all time high. And when we had our. Actually, we did. No, we did. I just looked it up because I haven't been paying too much attention, but I just looked it up. We passed the all time high. So we've already done something that's never been done before if we're going by these patterns that's bullish even more bullish having precisely at this candle we are about 50 percent below the all-time highs but as a trader i understand to respect these type of principles because it's better safe than sorry you can't sit here and watch a history go on for this long and prepare for something random to happen it's like that that's that's not very wise
But if something random does happen, obviously you benefit. But I, I like the the mindset that he's teaching to you know, you know to to be realistic. And if something unrealistic happens, then hey, it's a blessing, baby. Let's go. If you take the next one, and if you look at where we were relative to the having, the having was about this price, and we're, we're once again forty to fifty percent below that all time high, and we start getting a little bit closer here. What you notice is that when we are here in this halving, we're still 40 to 50% below the price. So is it possible that Bitcoin makes a new all-time high before the halving? Anything is possible, but is it probable? No, it's not probable. If you look at all of these halvings, were precisely 40 to 50% below their previous all-time high, and they were in phase two. So we should expect more of the same, not some extraordinary explosion that's never been seen before because quote this time is different I yeah so he's talking about the expectation he's not saying that it can't happen but he's saying the expectation that it will happen isn't something that you should use to make your decisions so i definitely i definitely agree with that i'd agree with that logic but something did happen but if you're banking on things like that happening all the time you're probably going to get wrecked in this game i've been making videos on youtube for seven years and for seven years, they've been telling me not to compare this cycle to the previous cycle because, Steve, this time is different. And every cycle plays out precisely the same. Why? Because humans act on emotion and humans are so predictable with their emotions. Ridiculously predictable. Humans cannot control their emotion when it comes to money. For the I think things are changing, though, because I think people are starting to understand what this means and also we have a lot of new money in the hands of younger people who who get it so a lot of big money is coming from younger investors who have the money to spend and their mindset towards things is a lot different because they're progressive they they understand where things is going so i think we could see some unrealistic some things that hasn't happened before and then people are getting more educated people are starting to understand why certain things is happening what like so I think knowledge is is becoming more accessible. I think we have actual people teaching now. You have courses like Andrew Tate where you can you can argue like if you like him or not, but the things that he teach can be a good beginner's guide. And then you also have a lot more qualified people with their own course, courses and stuff like that teaching people and helping a lot more people understand also. So I think we're we're moving towards more of a generation of understanding and that could that could boost things some. The history of mankind. So we have these cycles that are repeating patterns, but it gets very interesting when we compare what's having what's happening here with the RSI below. Now keep in mind, the RSI has a range from 100 to zero, okay? And when you're down below, that's the most oversold place in Bitcoin's history. And when you're up here above, it's the most overbought place in history. And you may say, well, why would everybody sell at the bottom and buy at the top? Steve, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense because humans can't control their emotion for the history of mankind. This is a bona fide fact. So you, what you want to do is do the opposite of the herd, but it's incredibly hard to do because of emotion. That's why everybody buys near the top and sells near the bottom, right? If you go back in time to what was happening during this time period in June 2022 until December 2022, when, pri when the price of Bitcoin was around 15,000, 16,000, 17,000, we were at literally, quite literally, if you look at the facts, literally, the most oversold place in Bitcoin's history. Literally, we'd never been this low. This is all of Bitcoin's history. We had never been this low. And it's easy to look back now and be like, yeah, that was the market bottom. We were the most oversold. But 80% of people were completely against me. I was yelling at the top of my lungs that the bottom is in and it's highly unlikely we go to 10K. Everybody was waiting to buy at 10K. They sold here, but what happened? We never reached 10K. In fact, I'll roll a clip. Roll the clip of what I was saying when we were at 15,000, 16,000. The charts that I studied and the charts that I've been studying 
for years and years and years are saying that the bottom is in and your wake up call is even if the bottom is not in it is more risky to be out of Bitcoin right now than in Bitcoin because there's a higher probability that the bottom is in. So if you're waiting for prices to dip below 10K, I don't think it's ever gonna happen. So what you wanna do is go based on the facts, not what we guess is gonna happen or what we hope is gonna happen, especially not what everybody is chanting in social media. Don't drink the herd juice. Whenever people start chanting things at, as if it's a certainty, it's not gonna happen. For example, a certainty in this bull run, a certainty, according to the high majority, is that we will reach 100K. Be careful of certainties. So here's what I'll say. This line right here in the RSI has just breached into this channel. This is so important. I want you to focus on this. So above, we're gonna compare these patterns to what we're doing in the RSI. So these patterns above, we talked about it. We had a bull flag, we had a golden cross, phase one, and we are in phase two. What we can say unequivocally is that this is our first run up into this zone since our market bottom. That's not my opinion, these are just facts. We had our market bottom, this is the first time the RSI has reached into this zone, bona fide fact. What happened in past cycles? when we had our first rally into this zone. Well, let's go back and let's look. We had our bottom of the market here in uh, 2015 and we rallied for the first time into this zone right here in June 2016, which by the way, was right before the halving. And again, these are just facts. That's why you've subscribed to my channel. We just what I, but what it looks like though, is that ba based on us actually hitting a new all time high, which he didn't think we could do, it looks like the bottom of things is getting lower and the hi the highs of things is getting higher. So like higher highs and lower lows, I think is what, what it's called. But yeah, it looks like we could potentially see something like 100K before we do come back down. Like, so I think that it is somewhat starting to, it's the same pattern still, but the results are starting to become bigger, I think. If I'm saying that right, let me know. Just you get what I'm saying? The facts, I don't you get what I'm saying. actually understand what I'm saying, and it actually helps you. I'm not telling you what you want to hear. I'm not trying to hype things up, 100x this, 1,000x this, million dollar Bitcoin. No, it's just a no BS approach, straight facts. That's why you subscribe. This is quite literally the first time we rallied up into this zone was right before the halving. And here, the first time in 2019 that we rallied into this zone was before the halving. So we can say, okay, in 2016, we rallied up here before the halving. In 2020, we rallied up here. So it went up and it looks like it stayed down there longer. It stayed down longer. It looks like it keeps staying down there longer maybe. Before the halving. Here we are today rallying up into the zone before the halving. So can we expect Bitcoin to plow through this zone, it's definitely possible, definitely possible. Anything is possible, but is it probable? We understand that it's possible, but maybe not so probable, but how probable or possible could it be? What I want you to look at is the second zone. We have the first zone here that's at about 67, and the top of our zone is at about 73. Now, if you look at that 73 zone, not only did we have it as resistance with our double top in the market, but if you look even further back, we had a lot of trouble with it here. We held it as support momentarily in February 18 near our market cycle top, and we held it on our run up here as support here. We held it as resistance back in 2014, and we held it as resistance back in 2012. So we have, I think a lot of the behaviors will start to change towards Bitcoin though, because of the, the SEC and all this stuff going on. I think it's more legitimate than it's ever been throughout its history. At this point today, it's more legitimate than it's ever been. So I think that that could be the difference maker. Um, it was speculative then. It's a hell of a lot less speculative now. It's legitimate. 12 years of data to suggest that this 73 level on the monthly chart in the RSI is so critical. And what we can also see is that Bitcoin has never broken above the 73 zone unless it broke into phase three. We've never done it in phase two. 
Look at phase two here. Again, phase two is when we have the having. Phase two, did we break above this zone? No, we only broke above it here after the having in January 2013. That's literally the candle that broke into phase three. After the having above phase two, okay, in phase three. How about 2016? When we broke above that, that, that zone here was here after the having in phase three, okay? 2020, when did we break above this zone? After the having in phase three. So when should we expect to break above the 73? We should expect it after the having in phase three. I know it sounds unreasonable. I know it sounds crazy. Bitcoin has been on a rally. Bitcoin is, is causing a lot of hype. Bitcoin is gaining the attention worldwide. Everybody is saying, hey, we could have a new all-time high before the halving. I get everything that was just said. All of those are possibilities, but they're not so probable. What's more probable, based on just data, is that Bitcoin has a break into phase three after the halving. That's more likely. Why? Because we didn't do it once, we didn't do it twice, we did it literally for Bitcoin's entire history. That's how it's played out. So we should expect that. Most people have this mind-boggling eclipse that happens where they say, you know what? What Steve is saying is reasonable. It's based on the facts. But how the hell is Bitcoin going to wait until after the halving to break into phase three? I think we're going to break into phase three tomorrow or the next day. Again, it's possible, but not so probable when you look at all the facts. Bitcoin has been repeating the same patterns for years and years. So we're going to have to check out his video. I want to check out his video after it actually it, it hit new all time highs. I want to see his updated perspective on things and see what, where he's going with it now. New all time high before the having is not so likely possible but not so likely. It's more probable that we reach a new all-time high after the halving, specifically around the summertime in this year. We should reach a new all-time high. And what's also interesting is if you look at the halving until all-time high, it's very interesting. We have 100, basically 100 to 200 days. Here is our halving. It took us about 100 to 200 days to reach a new all-time high. Here, 2016, we had our halving right here. It took 100 to 200 days to reach a new all-time high. 2020, this was our halving right here. It took 100 to 200 days to reach a new all-time high. Where most people are like, you know what? After the halving, the next day, the next week, new all-time high. That's not how it works. 100 to 200 days, like clockwork, for the history of Bitcoin so far. Is this time different, or is it more of the same because humans have a very difficult time with emotion. Hit that. This is the first time in history is different, it looks like. That's crazy. This is bullish. Subscribe button. I'll see you back here in the next video. Yeah, y'all. We finna be checking this out, man. We finna check out. I want to see some more of his analyze, his analyzing the charts. Um, so, yeah, we finna be checking that out. Um, be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you stay updated with this. Because, yeah, we about to go on this journey where we learn everything we need to know from as many sources as possible. So yeah, let's get into it, y'all. Um, I'm gonna catch y'all on the next one. Peace out, fam.